Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my next recap video and boy what a day did we have or hmm I don't even know how to put it delicately because really the story of this round did not start at 3 p.m. when uh, the clock started ticking but the story of this day started uh, about 10, 12, 14 hours prior to that when a certain player decided that it was a brilliant idea to play 200 plus ultra ultra bullet games until 5 a.m. Um, obviously I do have my opinion on that uh, since it's my channel I am going to very briefly reflect on the situation and I'm going to say as much as you reap what you sow and uh, I will leave it at that just to avoid controversy because that's never good. Um, Anyway, let's get into the game, which of course, ironically, is the Firuja Nepal game, because uh, it was an absolute uh, firecracker of a game, although, again, Nepal started off with his usual Petrov, which usually means that we are looking to um, have a rather peaceful game under normal circumstances. Now, lots of players tried different stuff throughout the tournament against Nepal, very excitingly, by the way. Um, including uh, Rapport, for example. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just great to see that um, uh, people are avoiding those mainline, main, main, mainline theories and trying their luck in various other side variations. Oh yeah, and Hikaru, of course, and he in fact did manage to outsmart Nepo uh, big time. So um, even the Petrov is not standing on as firm legs uh, as it used to or as it is meant to be, I suppose. Anyway, so into this opening, White has got a, the smallest of edges here due to the space advantage, but we are paying the price for the space advantage in shape of um, a sizable lag in development. Um, and yeah, F3, Ben Feingold would already tell you that White is dead lost, of course, uh, because never play F3. But the reality is that uh, this position is completely okay and is rather recallish. Um, although I would have to add, though, that this structure actually occurs from a lot of other openings too. So now we are kind of breaching out into more of playing a structure than an actual opening. And I'm not saying that as a pro or a con, uh, it's just an interesting thing to note. Queen b6, very logical, king h1, very logical, rook c8, and this was the moment of truth when uh, Ali Reza played uh, a move that really, really backfired on him. Now, the interesting thing, and unfortunately I forgot to look this up, or rather I forgot what it exactly was, but of course a lot of people went like, how can you play g4, yada, 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 and then I saw a tweet by Anish Giri, where in an almost identical position with the smallest of differences, g4 is actually the best move. So I don't really want to... Um, judge um, Firuja on this uh, g4 move. It's extremely ambitious and again this is the pattern of the entire tournament. Uh, all credit to Nepo, he is playing like a legend, he is, a deserved, uh, he is deserving every success he has currently in the tournament and likely he's going to come victorious. Although Ding is definitely doing uh, nice things in the tail end of the tournament but let's be honest with ourselves it is likely that Nepo is going to walk away with this tournament. But what I'm going to say to you is this. A lot of the times, Nepo's games were actually handed to him. However lame it may sound. Remember the Rapport uh, game where he decided to step out of repetition of a draw and immediately walked into, the, walked into a dead loss scenario? Like th Those are the little things that decide a tournament like that. And here too, instead of G4, if we play F4, White is actually marginally better here by the engine's measure, which of course is easy to say when you're sitting in a chair and you're looking at Stockfish, but I'm pretty sure that Alireza knew what risk he took on board when he played G4. Now, I am not against risk, but this is the type of position again, and I already said that about the Rapport game, where Nepo excels. He has got the peace activity, he has got the initiative, you don't want to give that to him. And from here on out, this is a steady downhill all the way to the end. And Nepo plays really, really well for the most part. H6 provoking H4, nine, uh, rook e8, g5 takes, takes knight h5. And now we begin to realize that although the knight on h5 is awkwardly placed, it actually does have now a lot of bite towards g3, which means that white has to waste the move to deal with the threat and that one move just gives enough time black 
to sort out his pieces so that f4 is not going to win a piece. And now after knight g6, the black pieces are going to become ridiculously aggressive. And here after f4, black is already winning by this beautiful tactical sequence, knight f4, bishop f4, and queen b2. Now a lot remained behind the scenes that I would like to show you, especially for black, interestingly enough, uh, because at certain points, Napo didn't choose what the engine considered best, and boy, some of those variations are just something else. For example, right away here after knight e4, the engine's favorite move is actually bishop d8, which is absolutely mental because we just sacked the piece and now we are inviting the loss of an exchange, turning the whole shebang into a full rook. But no worries, we just go rook e2, let's sack more. That's totally fine. And now if queen takes, then we take on d4. And when they take on c8, we're playing queen takes f4. What a move. Queen takes f4. I mean, knight f4 is actually playable too, but it's nowhere near as good. Because now after take, take the uh, 97 check. Actually, there is no more than perpetual check more than likely uh, for black. Or to enter a very um, shaky... Um, endgame with check check when they take the rook I take the bishop and I don't think black has the slightest hopes of winning that so yeah actually queen f4 is the move absolutely surreal and if knight uh, rook takes then knight takes then we pick off the e2 um, queen and then we take on c8 and the two bishops are going to us out muscle the rook super duper easily a sensational line absolutely out of this world chess, starting with rook e2, queen e2, queen d4, and then queen f4. What a line! And that's not even all of it. Wait for it. I can choose to take back here with the knight. What then? No worries. We go rook c2, king h1, knight takes f4. I wanted to say rook e2, but it's no good. Uh, actually, knight f4 is the correct move order. And now after knight takes f4, we have got a forced uh, mate with check here and check. And now we see the point of this bishop drop back to d8. That the bishop often comes back to one of these diagonals to slice and dice. And this is now mate in two. So they cannot take on f4 um, with the knight. The clever move here is actually to, in, uh, to insert rook b1. And only now take the knight. And now you see how clever sometimes chess players are and the variation can be so subtle now it no longer works to go check here and bishop b6 because white can simply sack the exchange and still be a piece up however instead we just play the casual bishop c7 and with a full rook down black just plays a quiet attacking move placing white's knight on d6 on prey and black excuse me white has nothing absolutely nothing to do it is one of the most amazing dominations i've seen in a long long time the idea is that if the knight on d6 moves anywhere then we can just eliminate the f4 knight and now check followed by mate on g2 means that the bishop is immune to capture and if the bishop is immune to capture then carnage on the second rank is to be expected once again a sight to behold an absolutely amazing position just blown away by these amazingly clever and dynamic variations of the engine. So instead, um, Nepo played rook c4, which of course is also deadly. I mean, all four, all, excuse me, all three pieces on the fourth rank are hanging. That's like, what? That's just so nice. Bishop e3, now all the pieces on the e file are hanging. And of course, bang, he jumps onto it with bishop takes g5. Um, just marvelous chess and once again kudos to Nepo because whilst we might say that this game was handed to him or at least the opportunity he still played spectacular chess and here after Rook A1 I found another line that uh, I really really want to share with you and that variation was Bishop takes E3 which was actually a queen sack as opposed to the game continuation, rook d4, which is a pseudo sacrifice, because as soon as we take here, they take our queen. But bishop e3 is a real queen sack, where after rook d4, now further pieces will be dropping according to the engine, even here, best is knight d6. If queen b1 after rook takes e4, although black only has got two minor pieces for the queen, but the entirely naked and defenseless and exposed king means 
that this attack is going to break through. Wow! Just wow! What a game! Instant Nepo, of course, went, went for the safe win. Rook d4, um, rook a2, rook d1, bishop d1, and bishop takes e3. And this is the time to take stock. Black is an exchange down, but has got 77 pawns for it. And the two bishops are incredibly active. In fact, I will backpedal on that one. The whole entire black army is incredibly active. And the white king is always exposed to very annoying checks. The rest was just an absolute carnage and mop-up job by Nepo forcing b7 to fall, but then shutting down the knight. And now the rest of the army is coming in with, uh, again, decisive effect. If knight d6, rook e3 is the main idea, when check, knight check, all of these pesky motives will actually expose the king to a rather vicious attack. Um, Ali Reza instead went bishop c4, rook e3 again, the same idea, king h1, but there is nowhere to hide, bishop h3, and rook c1 was the last mistake, and now after bishop f5, the subsequent bishop f4 will indeed expose this king too much uh, to an attack. Um, after bishop f1, we actually get to see a beautiful mate motif on h3, which of course wasn't played um, after bishop e4, Ali Reza resigned, as king h2, bishop takes d5, just would have led to an entirely hopeless position. Once again, the knight is paying the price, and if knight d6, the rook is also on prey. So these snipers, the two bishops, were definitely the heroes of uh, this game. Um, I guess uh, there are lots of conclusions to be drawn, but I will leave that to those that uh, the situation concerns. Um, what we definitely have is a very clear leader in uh, Jan Nepomniachny. And now I'm going to also claim that I had talked absolute garbage in the previous video. It turns out that um, if Maggie decides not to play, actually the regulation says if either player of the World Championship match pulls out, the second candidate is going to step in. So assuming that Nepo wins and Maggie says, no, thank you, um, whoever came second in the candidates is going to be uh, Jan Nepomniachny's um, challenger, so to speak, for the crown. So that's where we are at the moment with two more rounds to go. Thanks for watching. I will be back with the next video tomorrow. Don't forget to like, to sub, to comment and to super like. And I will see you later, alligator. Thanks for watching. Bye.